Hey everybody, welcome to another Digital Making at Home video. Following along with the theme of making video games this week, uh, I thought I'd knock up a couple of short instructional videos for you, what we like to call ingredients. So these are simple things that you can use whenever you make a video game, just to make your video game that little bit better. I thought I'd start with something simple and we'd do a timer. So if you haven't already seen the video of me and my sidekick Zay making a really short little archery game on the project site, I'd go away and watch that one first, because this is kind of an add-on to that video. If you haven't done that project, it's absolutely fine. You can still watch this video, but it just won't make as much sense at the end when I go to add the timer into the archery game so you can see how it works. Switch over to that screen now. So we click plus a few times just so you can see my code a little bit better. So here's my stage that will show what's going to happen. I've got my sprite here, my backdrops here. Okay, so here's my sprite just to show me where my code's going. So my code's going to go onto the sprite here. Now, normally when I do code for a timer, anything that's sort of an overarching control in my game, anything that manages lots of things at once, I tend to add that to my backdrop. So I'm just going to click here uh, and I'll add a little backdrop. We'll just do something simple. So I might go from, I'll add desert. Uh, and then I'll add another one, which would just be something really different so that we can see what it is. We use forest, okay, and so I'll leave it like that. Uh, so I'm going to add the code to my backdrop. So the first thing we always add is an event, okay, the ones with the rounded top, usually the ones at the top of a script to start our script. And we'll do when green flag clicked, that's our universal starter. So when you make a game, anything that runs off when green flag clicked, they're the things we all want to have happen at once at the very beginning of our script. We want to kick off our multiple threads all at the same time. So we add our when green flag clicked. Now what we're making here, a timer, is really just a loop, okay? And a loop is something that does over and over again. And now what we want to do is we're going to add a funky loop called a repeat until, okay? So instead of just having it repeat, which is this block here, we're going to have it repeat until. We want it to keep going until something happens. And that something is when our timer hits zero. So what we need now is we have this little shape here in our block. This is what I like to call a gem shape. And so into that gem shape, we can fit certain blocks that are the right shape. So you can see here we've got our operators. So I want this to repeat until my timer equals zero. So I want an equal sign. So I throw my equal sign into this little block here. So I'm going to repeat until time equals zero. Okay, now I need to make a variable for my time. So what I'm going to do here is create a new variable. Now a variable is kind of like a jar that we put a label on. Okay, it's a thing that we can store things in, thing that we can change and adapt when we need to. Now I'm going to call my variable something sensible and obvious. You can call it anything that you like. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could call it Fred or Jane or Purple Monkey Dishwasher. But if somebody comes back to look at your code later and it's called something completely random, they're not going to understand your work. So I like to label my things with sensible titles. So this one here, I'll call it time, because that's what it is, okay? It's measuring time. And so you'll see it's made my new variable right here. Okay, that's my time, and I can plug that into here. So now my code says, once I click the green flag, keep repeating this part inside here until time equals zero. Now, what's going to happen when I start my game is that time's going to equal zero straight away. So I need to set time at the beginning of my game to however long I want my game to be. So I'm going to set mine to be five. Okay, that's not very long, but for the purposes of you watching, you don't want to sit there for 30 seconds while it counts down. I'm just going to use five. So I set my time to five when I start the game. Then I repeat this loop until time equals zero. And what I want it to do over and over again is change my variable time down one. So I want to change my variable by not one, but minus one. Okay, now what's going to happen when I click my code is it's not going to work. All right, I'm going to build this code here, I'm going to try and run my thing, but it won't do what I want it to do because I haven't put something in. Okay, so I'm going to click go a couple of times and you see if you can work out what I've missed. So watch here. Okay, so here's my time counter. It's at zero. When I click the green flag, it should go to five and then count down to zero again. Why is it not working? Because I haven't put a weight in. So I take my weight, okay, at the moment it's going for five and it's counting down to zero as fast as a computer can count, which is basically instant. So if I take this weight one second and plug it in at the top, okay, it's important that it goes above your change variable because we want it to start at five, count down for one second and then switch to four. Okay, if we had the change variable first, it would instantly count down to four and we wouldn't have as much time. So we count one second, remove my variable by one, okay, and do that until you get to zero. So let's click my green flag now, okay. Why is it? Ah, I know why. Because I haven't changed my down list to time. Okay, so all of these need to say time. So now I set time to five. I repeat until time is zero. Wait one second, count down by one. So green flag now. Here we go. Four, three, two, 
one, zero. Fabulous. And so now I know that my timer counts down. Uh, what I can do with that is after my loop is finished, I can add it something to it. Okay, what do I want it to do? I want it to, let's do something simple like next backdrop. Okay, so in my one, it's going to be forest. And then when I reset my game, it will count down, set it to five, repeat this until it gets to zero, count down by one every second, and then switch a backdrop when I get to zero. Now your one could be anything, okay? So you can do some cool stuff in your game, which I'll show you later around control, about stopping everything that happens in the game or bringing up another sprite that's like a game over, but we'll do those in another video. So for now, if I run my green flag, five, four, three, two, one, change. Okay, next backdrop. So if I click it again, I'll go to my next backdrop again, two, one, backdrop okay so now I've got a timer this is a timer that counts down from five and then it has something happen at the end so I'm gonna take that that's a really cool little bit of code I'm gonna use I'm gonna to go to my stuff and I'm gonna adapt the archery game that I started previously with Zay so I'm gonna take that and you can see here it saved my little project so if you want to get back your code you can see it in there okay that's fine I'm gonna see inside my archery game I'm gonna add that timer to it now just to add a little bit of an extra element of play to my game so you'll see here what I need to do uh, is I've got my game and when I click my green flag my arrow starts moving when I push space it fires my arrow <laughs> along with a very loud noise I'll just turn that down a little bit okay so there's my game and it restarts itself again so when I push go uh, turn my volume down so what I want to do is I want to add a timer to my game. So I'm going to do it on my backdrop, okay, because I like to add my control systems to my backdrop, and I'm going to do everything we just did before, but I'm going to do it quite a bit quicker. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to take my repeat until block, I'm going to take my operator block and get equals, I want to say it went equals zero, I'm going to go to my variables, I've got my variable time already, but you would make a variable and call it time, I'll take my time and plug it in here, I want to set my time up here to five, then I would like to take that and I'm going to change time by minus one. I'm going to put a wait in, which is for one second so that I can count down by five. And then when I get to the end here, I would like it to play a sound, play that bonk sound. Okay, and then I'm going to get it to control and I'm going to get it to stop everything okay so that will kill the entire game everything that's moving will stop it will be done with so what I'm going to do is you can see here I've got my time variable so if you double click on that it can change the way it looks just a pro tip for you there lots and lots of people know how to do that but if you double click it here it just shows you a little clock uh, and just my number so when I click go you'll see my time will count down I can push space and fire as many arrows as I can do. oh ran out of time okay so I only managed to fire one arrow but if you change that to something a bit more player friendly like 10 seconds uh, you'll be a lot better off so we've got that here my timer works and it kills my game so whenever you'd like to make a game if you want to add a timer to it which is just a little bit more risk to the player it adds another element of gameplay that wasn't there before but that's how you do it keep watching guys share your games with us on rpf.io slash home if you make something really cool I'm sure lots of people will comment and give you feedback you can also share your projects directly on scratch so if you make sure that when your project is up here you just click share next to the name of your project and then other people can get it and give you feedback on it remix your work and see how you built your stuff keep making stuff guys be safe I'll see you again soon bye